also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, the SV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okansi. Tonight, leadership of the new protected party and the leadership of the majority caucus in parliament expected to hold a crucial meeting in the coming days over a proposal to change the leadership of the majority caucus in parliament. We have an exclusive on this matter tonight. Stay with us. Also, five years on, the Attorney General says there's no fit for purpose docket available to his office for any prosecution of the alleged murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Swale. When will justice come for Ahmed Swale and his family? We have a conversation tonight. A half hour with the government's promise to expand infrastructure for access to legal education in Ghana. There are not many lawyers, but what's the status of that promise by the NPP to expand access to legal education? Infrastructure indeed. That's on Manifesto Check tonight. As always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and X. We'll get into some of your comments as we go on, on the show. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Some students of the Osino Presby Senior High Technical School in the Fantiaqua South District of the Eastern Region have allegedly beaten up another student in the Insutem Senior High Technical School to death. Vehicles were bent in the violent clash which happened between the Osino Presby Senior High Technical School students and the Insuam Pim residents on Monday, February 19. Although police presses have been beefed up in the school to avoid reprisal attacks, relatives of the deceased are holding Osino Presby Senior High School responsible for the violence that led to the death of their family member. <music> The Attorney General and Minister for Justice has informed Parliament that the police is yet to submit any prosecution docket to his office five years after the murder of the investigative journalist Ahmed Swali. Answering questions in Parliament, Godfrey Yabuadami told MPs he continues to employ the police to intensify efforts to identify and arrest the journalist killers. Let's know that. It's a matter being investigated by the Criminal Investigations Department of Ghana Police Service. No docket fit for prosecution or action has been built and presented to my office as I stand before you since the deceased died. It is therefore correct to say that the attorney general is not seized of the matter. I demanded a report to the state House of Investigations and the director general of CID obliged my request and presented a docket giving an account of work so far done on the Ahmed Swali murder case. President Ekufuado intends to meet the majority caucus later in the week over matters relating to the leadership in parliament. The emergency meeting of the National Executive Council of the New Patriotic Party on Monday had on its agenda changes to the leadership of the majority. But the majority side at a news conference in Parliament denied the potential leadership changes. The publication that are going wrong is not true. It's, not fa it's false that the caucus, the majority caucus, has not made any changes in its leadership. The majority caucus has not contemplated making any changes to its leadership. And that we tell the whole world. Ghana to ignore any such publication. And I want to assure you that we have confidence in the leadership as they are and the status quo shall remain. A crack academy could have lost tons of perishable goods meant for feeding boarding students if the electricity company had extended its power cuts over outstanding debt. The school's over 400,000 cities' indebtedness to ECG led to the disconnection of power on February 19, causing distress among students and teachers. By 11 a.m. this morning, power has been resolved. This is the first time I have experienced this. It's, it's bad to put the school's name out there in this situation. 
look at the number of schools, over 700 second cycle institutions in Ghana, and then your name is out there that you owe this amount you haven't paid, which is not fault of yours. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's bad. <laughs> The latest demographic health survey report on young people's sexual experience of first sex reveals that more women have sex at an earlier age compared to men. Stakeholders are concerned about the youth's lack of understanding of sexual reproductive health issues, leading to a discussion on the most effective teaching methods. In our study, we realized that coercion is a very gendered experience. So typically, young men feel much less direct coercion than females. All those who experienced high coercion were females. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next leadership of the new Petote party at the party level and also the leadership of the majority caucus in parliament expected to hold a crucial meeting that's what we're picking in the coming days over this proposal to change the leadership of the caucus in parliament now this is something that has been playing out in very interesting and different ways over the last 24 hours at least and uh, we have that information gathered from our sources and at the presidents that President Kofuado intends to meet the majority caucus later in, in the coming days over the seeming disagreement relating to some proposed changes to the party's leadership in parliament. Talking about the majority caucus led by Oseche Mensa Bonsu, the Swami, member of parliament. Now this meeting of the National Executive Committee, that was yesterday, that emergency meeting, had on its agenda changes to the leadership of the majority and we're going to show you the agenda paper of that uh, emergency meeting we have a copy of that agenda paper and and we'll show to you on the screen shortly uh the agenda item five which specifically captures that proposal in fact the conversation about the change in the leadership of the majority caucus in parliament you, you're going to hear shortly from joseph also who makes the point that there hasn't been any, any conversation this has not been contemplated. No contemplation about the change in the majority leadership. Earlier, he addressed the press conference together with some NPP MPs on this matter. Take a look. We are here to inform you and through you to the world that the publication that are going wrong is not true, it's, not fa it's false, that the caucus, the majority caucus, has not made any changes in its leadership. The majority caucus has not contemplated making any changes to its leadership. And that we tell the whole world, Ghana, to ignore any such publication. And they want to assure you that we have confidence in the leadership as they are, and the status quo shall remain. We are aware that upon the nomination of one of the deputy whips as a minister, a replacement will be made. That replacement will be made by the caucus when we have had the opportunity and the time to consider the appropriate replacement. The Parliament of Ghana has adopted standing orders which places the selection and change or otherwise of leadership in the hands of the caucus and not anybody outside parliament. Why do, we, why do we not see the current leadership of the majority doing the press conference as a test now? But it's you. They are busy in the chamber. And it's about them. It is about them. The rest of us must stand up for them. They have led us effectively and efficiently. And the rest of us must stand up for them. And indeed, it doesn't need the leaders to say that we have not taken a decision. It is we, the members, caucus, we the caucus. We have not taken any such decision. We are not contemplating any such decision. Mr. Speaker, is there an external attempt to remove or say chairman Sabozo, a speaker of your uh, the leader of your caucus? I'm not aware of any such thing. Nobody has discussed that with the caucus. And since nobody 
have the power to do that outside the caucus. There may be rumors and intricacies, but the caucus in parliament is not aware of any attempt to remove anybody. Oh, it says there's no contemplation. The caucus, as the majority caucus in parliament, they're not aware of any conversation, any contemplation, no consideration for that matter. You, he, that's what Joe said also, the first deputy speaker of parliament. is flanked by a number of MPs. In fact, majority of the people fl who flanked Joe also are persons or MPs who are not going to return to parliament, in, in the ninth parliament. I'm talking about the likes of uh, Isaac Kesiama and then also uh, Carlos Ahinkra and, and many others, as you saw there. But is it the case that there was no contemplation or there hasn't been any conversation or consideration for that matter, as Joe Osei also said? Take a look at this. This is the NPP's, the yesterday uh, National Committee meeting, the agenda paper. You have a copy. Take a look. This is the agenda for emergency national executive meeting, which took place yesterday. Venue, Alisa Hotel, date, February 19. Day, Monday, yesterday. That was where the announcement of the, the team, campaign team of Dr. Baumia was put out. Look at the agenda five, as highlighted there. Proposed change in parliamentary leadership. Agenda five. This was on the agenda for that National Executive Committee meeting yesterday. Proposed change in parliamentary leadership. For what we gather is that when we got, they got to that point, the National Executive Committee did not discuss this matter. They skipped it and went to Agenda 6. But it is not to say that this is off the table, even though it was captured on the agenda, but was not discussed. So this is what we have. Now, as things are playing now, the question is, which has come up quite strongly, following from this, an issue that has come up quite strongly is the question of who has the power to select the leaders of the caucus, that's the majority caucus, minority caucus in parliament, the face of the new parliamentary standing orders. The House has adopted not long ago. In fact, it took effect on, on January 2nd. Now, let's take a look at what the new standing orders say about choosing a leader. Standing order six interpretation. And take note, these are the new standing orders. Majority caucus means the members of the party or parties that have the largest number of seats in the House. Majority leader means a member of parliament designated by the majority caucus as their leader in the House goes on. Actually, then, what this means, the second, as I read to you, that the majority leader, as put in inverted commas, means a member of parliament designated or chosen by the majority caucus as their leader in the House. And the majority caucus, as you're seeing up there, is defined as members of the party or parties that have the largest number of seats in parliament. So, it does not mention at any point the party's power to determine at any point who the majority leader be, is. Now, take a look at this. This is what the old standing orders said. Majority leader means a member of parliament designated by the party or parties holding majority of the seats in the house as their recognized leader in the House. Now, if you look at this and the new standing orders, there's a clear differentiation that gives the power of choosing who the majority leader is to the members of parliament. Well, it's live here on Ghana tonight. We are live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSCV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And, and this is something that we've been keeping an eye on uh, over the last at least 48 hours when the news of a possible change in the leadership of the majority in parliament began to make the rounds. And we put out some names even before the National Executive Committee meeting of the party yesterday. Now we do know a number of things have happened and we've just played to you the press conference that was addressed by Jose Uso, first deputy speaker of parliament, reimposing the confidence that the, the leadership has in 
the majority leader or such and so and they are not going to countenance any change in leadership that the party is even considering for that matter one person who for those of you who do not know even before this press conference today led another group of mps <laughs> yesterday at the national executive <coughs> committee of the party he is with us in the studio tonight to to get into why they're opposing this change by the party the honorable andy apiakubi is member of parliament for the asantia chim north constituency and is an, a member of a number of committees including the leader of the 98 M mps who if you recall, this is about almost two years ago, asked the president to sack an Ofriata. He's with us in the studio. Good to have you. Thank you very much, my brother. And thank you for having me. But some say you are gradually gaining you know, the notoriety, for the lack of a better expression, of opposing or leading some uprising against certain interested parties. I am a member of the National Executive Committee of the party, and I responded to an invitation to attend the meeting. Uh, incidentally, I met with a lot of other colleagues who are members of, part, members of parliament and members of the committee. So uh, it's not like it, and it was an orchestrated uh, attempt to, you know, to swamp the meeting. We were all members, legitimate members of the committee, and mm. we responded to invitation to attend. I see. So and what, what you was said that? that I'm gaining notoriety. That's what I'm, I'm Why would you not yes. say rather than I'm gaining popularity? For popularity. Being, cons for being fact, consistent in what I believe in. Fantastic. So you are gaining popularity in being yes. consistent in what I believe in. What you believe in. And I don't rise up against anybody. I take a position and I defend it. And I want to be seen as being consistent with the beliefs that I hold. Mm. And that's all. So what was your demand at the National Executive Committee meeting yesterday? No, uh, we had been summoned into a meeting and we attended. Mm -hmm. And in the meeting, normally when we go, we share the agenda for the meeting. Mm -hmm. And it happened yesterday as well. And in the meeting, uh, agenda items. Indeed, I was a little late into the meeting. So item one, two... Uh, and three had been taken already before I got there. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got there, we were on item four, mm. discussing the fallout from the primaries. True. Then uh, when we finished, we were only just informed at that time that the next item had been dropped and that was... Yes, the uh, fifth item was proposed change in parliamentary leadership. Yes. Uh, so my intention was to listen to what the party was talking about, that item, mm. and then uh, prefer our position. That is the proposed uh, changes yes. in the parliamentary but, leadership. Uh, today, variously, people have discussed uh, attempts to remove uh, our leaders. I didn't see it as such. I thought it was an op opportunity for the party to explain the new position of the statute that had been passed. Okay. But you see, we have passed a new enactment as um, uh, in uh, standing orders of parliament. Yes. And this takes effect from the second day of January 2024. Mm -hmm. So this enactment is already in force. In force. Okay. And I'm sure that the leadership of my party wanted to explain the new positions, which is contrary to precedent. And indeed, you understand, and both of us understand that, President follows the law. True. So this having come out of parliament as a new enactment, everyone expected to understand that uh, this takes precedence over whatever was, what was the case. So that was what you were expecting. So I expected but, that as punished. But, but did that happen? Because already there were, there were publications about names of certain persons who were going to be announced yesterday as majority leader. There were publications on social media, but mm -hmm. we wouldn't pick information from social so media. So what did the party and treat did, it as did, what, did it ever come up from the party? at the meeting that there was going to be a proposed change in the leadership? No. As as was captured here. Because I see the item the item five on your agenda for yesterday's mm -hmm. National Executive Committee meeting is quite clear. It says proposed change in parliamentary leadership. That's clear. Yes. Uh, so it was either the party was going to explain matters in respect of uh, social media publications 
or going to take a position and want to defend it and solicit our opinion. Mm -hmm. So it could have been either way. But we were ready for the discussions on that and we will take a position and defend the position. W would you have but supported any proposal to change the leadership? I would not have supported it. I would not have supported it. Indeed, we didn't contemplate uh, discussions that would lead to any change. And in any case, I was also informed that the current position of the law was that uh, members of parliament will select their own leaders mm -hmm. in parliament. That is, that's and the this, new standing is the orders. this is the new standing orders. And leaders were going to be selected to perform in parliament. So I couldn't see why and how somebody else from outside the house was going to select leaders to perform in the house. I'm talking about just somebody else. Talking about the party leadership. And well, well <clears throat> when I say somebody else, it's inclusive of everybody. So I wouldn't imagine how in the face of the law there was going to be a selection or a process of selection for, for new leaders to perform in the House, contrary to the rules of engagement of the House as per the standing orders. So the MPP leadership has no power, no right to, to propose any changes to the leadership of Parliament? Well, everybody has the power to propose, as you say rightly, propose for the consideration of members of parliament. You could, even you as a journalist, you could tell me, Andy, I prefer that you select Mr. A, B, C, or D, so that it will be a proposal coming from you. What about if they instruct, instigate, and actually demand the leadership be changed? Well, uh, there is nobody outside the house who has a mandate to demand. But, of course... Uh, civil society as it is, anybody could make a proposition for consideration. So the party uh, could make a proposition to members of parliament for consideration. But and in the event impose. that they cannot impose, in the event that the members agree to the proposal, it will so happen. But to say demand performance mm -hmm. uh, requires that you have an authority to exercise, and that authority is not there for any other person to exercise apart from members of parliament, according to the new enactment. And in any case, even members of parliament, be it persons or group of persons, will not have that mandate, except all of us acting together as a caucus. We have the capacity and the mandate to select our leaders as a caucus. So this news of a, a, a change in leadership to have Alexander Fenio marking as your majority leader is one that you, together with your first deputy speaker and, and members of the leadership of the majority caucus, you would oppose? I'm sure that if ever anybody made such a proposition, uh, it would be only just a proposition for consideration. But if somebody made a publication that we have selected this group of people to lead a party, we would uh, not submit to it. You we will to it. And is it, this decision is unanimous. It's unanimous? Yes. The entire majority, uh, the majority, members, the majority of the caucus will not submit to that proposition. To a change in the leadership? No, we will not. Of Osei leadership? We will not. Majority of the leadership. I can count on my fingers, uh, maybe members of parliament who would be supportive of such a position. But I can tell you for sure. Well, so it's indeed the case that some will support a proposition for the change well, in the leadership in, in of all cases, In all cases, if somebody, some people are being proposed, mm -hmm. there is a presumption that those who are being proposed would be in a position to support right. such a proposition. So I cannot say that everybody, but at least I am aware that majority of members of parliament will not submit to such a proposition. To change or say change To change the leadership, present leadership. And don't forget that leadership doesn't only in include Oseche Mensabosu. Indeed. It, it includes all of them having been selected by... And don't forget that... Well, but but in, this, on, on this, that same tangent, the person who was going to, or who has been widely publicized to take over as majority leader, is a member of the leadership. He's still in leadership. So why, why would you oppose that? He is in leadership in a different capacity than the one being held by Honorable Seche Mensabusu. And yes, therefore, the, we are not... We, yes, but we are not prepared to 
you know, amend the leadership of the caucus. Save that uh, even by the terms of this uh, rules of engagement, members in, oppos in positions are deemed to be members so appointed as per the standing orders. Mm. And uh, there is a caveat like that. It says that members already appointed in the previous uh, dispensation are considered to be so appointed by these new standing orders. So everybody takes his position and everybody keeps his position by virtue of publication of these standing orders. And are there some interest groups pushing for this change in the leadership of the majority in parliament? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, I have also read it from social media. And I only saw it But as... you were at the NEC meeting yesterday. Yes, I was there. Member. I was there. Did you get the sense that... No, it didn't happen in the committee meeting. The NEC didn't discuss it. Uh, it was on the agenda all right. But I told you that I was a little late into the meeting. Mm. To the extent and when that I it, got to there, the, to the extent that I was, was told the that, agenda. I was told that it had been dropped. So we ne never discussed it. I see. But to the extent I was on the agenda to discuss a change in the leadership of parliament, that means that there's been some conversation and consideration going on already. Like I explained to you earlier, it could have been uh, a subject matter that was worthy of discussion. Okay. And it could have fallen this way or that way. Well, the Something NDC that was on, not worth discussing. On this path just a little over a year ago. We we'll see how when the have NDC been over the took this there was the old standing orders. There was the old standing orders, and we had president that they followed. But now, and like I've told you, mm -hmm. president will follow the law. This is a publication of the act of parliament, and therefore this constitutes enactment, which is law. Well, there are some who say that this proposal is strategic for the party for the next nine, ten months ahead of you. Well, all laws come and they cry for enforcement. And irrespective of the time that the laws are passed, from the day of passage, they continue to be law, to be obeyed and followed. So I recall that when you, together with your colleagues, addressed that press conference to have <clears throat> the president sack in Oforiata, that same evening, on that same day, the president called you into a meeting, impressed on you, gave you timelines that were never followed. And then now, two years on, that has been done. We are getting information that the, the president is asking for a meeting on this matter with you, the, the leadership, and, and then the members of the majority caucus. Well, if he does impress on you that, you know what, give consideration to these changes, would you do that? Well, if the president invites the caucus into a meeting, I wouldn't be able to predetermine what issues will arise in the meeting because uh, I'm not privy to any agenda for that meeting as you're talking about. And I am not also in a position to guess the subject matter to be discussed uh, in the said proposed meeting. But if the president calls us into a meeting and tells us that please give consideration to this proposal, well, we'll take it as part of the proposition tendered by our president, and we will affect it. We will uh, either discuss it there or we'll retire into our caucus and discuss it and give also our position to the president. But I'm sure it will not be uh, a position taken to be imposed on us. So if he calls us into a meeting to discuss it, we will also prefer our positions and discuss with him. But Otherwise... Return to caucus and discuss and take a decision and so revert to him and inform him. But now the position is clear. You are opposed to any change of the leadership of Osaichi Mensa Bonsu in parliament. We are happy with the leadership as it is right now. And until we are uh, uh, informed or convinced otherwise, the position we hold is that let the leadership be as it is. Thank you for no. coming. You're um, most welcome. So you didn't give me opportunity to greet my people in a Santa you know. <laughs> I'm sure they are watching us. Yes. And that is a position we have taken, and we are communicating it to, them, to the, uh, that to the you public. you not support any change in the leadership. For, now, for we, now, our position is that we are happy with the leadership of parliament as it is right now. He's a member of parliament for the Asantia Chim North Constituency, and the Apia Kobe.
uh, uh, joining us here on, on Ghana tonight uh, for a quick conversation on, on this matter. And the could we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is Ghana tonight. This is an issue that we're going to stay the steam on uh, going forward here on Ghana tonight and across all media general platforms. Now, coming up next, how far will the government's promise to expand infrastructure for access to legal education in Ghana? Tonight, on Manifesto Check, we check the status of the Law Village project because that was a promise. Guess what? Um, five years on, they are, uh, we, we're getting, getting into th this matter and matters arising here on uh, Manifesto Check. Now, this is going on tonight. This segment is to ensure that, that level of accountability is brought into our democracy so that politicians don't tell the Ghanaian people what they think the Ghanaian people want to hear so they can vote for them. It must make sense. This is Manifesto Check. Manifesto check. Let's get into that promise of a law village. In fact, this was captured in the NPP manifesto in 2020. Now, my manifesto checker, Dennis Barberi Wadam, is here with me. So always good to have you. Now, what, 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 what are colleague? <laughs> yes, that that makes us two. Indeed. So today we are delving into the terrain of legal education and the run up to the 2020 election. There was a lot of advocacy, a lot of protest and agitation um, towards some legal reforms, as they called it then. There was an, a hashtag that had to do with open up legal education. Indeed. So that, a lot of that went into some of the promises that were made by the key parties. But for the fact that the MPP is in party and we're holding them accountable, we just go back onto their manifesto to check what they made with respect to legal education. Now, the promise that they made was that over the next four years, we will expand infrastructure to increase access to professional legal education. Professional legal education here refers to the part where you train to become a lawyer, not the mm -hmm. faculty level. I see. Because for a very long time, the challenge has been transitioning from the faculty into the professional law course, what is popularly called MACOLA. Yeah. So that was the basis for this particular promise. Even though details were not given at this point, mm -hmm. um, as the days rolled by, we got to appreciate exactly what they were talking about. But even before we get there, let's listen to Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, who at the launch or the unveiling of the MPP manifesto said something about this particular um, campaign promise. Let's look at it and come back for the rest of the conversation. We will also expand infrastructure to increase access to professional legal education. This is one area that the limited infrastructure in the law school really um, limits intake. And so there's a lot of frustration with many prospective lawyers not able to get in. So we are going to ex help expand the infrastructure needs so that we can get more people who are able to study to study. This was uh, ahead of the 2020 elections at the University of Cape Coast. Yes, that was okay. the unveiling of the MPP manifesto. All right. So that was a promise well captured. Now fast forward to 2021, we would learn about a project called the Law Village. The Law Village. Now what is that Law Village? Simply a project that was to established some five major buildings on some five acres of land somewhere around the UPSA Legon. Mm -hmm. So on the stretch from um, the Presec Junction right. towards UPSA. Yeah, I, I see that, 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 that yes. land. Yes, just before the Vice Chancellor's office. Sure. There's yeah. a vast piece of land there, which the project was supposed to be cited on. In fact, it has actually cited. And the details of the project are such that it was going to have five major buildings, one academic block, a library block, a conference block, and a hostel block. The project was estimated to cost some 55 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. It was to be executed in phases, starting with the academic block. Right. The cutting of the sword for the commencement of this program was done in 2021. At that event, it was the President of the Republic who cut the sword for 
the commencement of the project. This law village. Yes. And this was what the president had to say in respect of that. It is my expectation that the completion of the law village will, will expand access to legal education without compromising on its quality and ultimately assisting the administration of justice throughout the country. He goes on to talk about how his government is committed to expanding legal mm -hmm. education and how this will spare um, Obviously. the, the, the administration of justice so. to higher heights. So as you can see the quotation of the president then, in that particular regard, the attorney general was there as well. He also made comments about how the government has made inf uh, infrastructural investments into the judiciary, including the law village projects. So talk about the, 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 the commitment to leave a lasting legacy in professional legal education. Precisely. It's and mind you, the president, even before this event, had, had cause to complain or even to suggest that a lot more people are not able to get to the law school because of its limited space so. and that his government was committed to doing so. Right. So this Law Village project came as some refreshing news for LLB holders and those who aspire to pursue law because the expectation was that once this was done, then it increases the space Absolutely. for a lot more access to legal education. But from 2021, since the sword was cut, so we are here today. We paid a visit to the site. Yes, we paid a visit to the site just to see what you, is happening there. You went to this site where the sword was cut? Yes, we were there. In 2021? Yes. Did you find building? Um, well, did you find a foundation? The think? videos will speak for us. We've got videos. We've got videos of it. Okay, let's, let's see it. Let's, let's see it. Um, yeah. Let, let's see that. Uh, a bear land with some well, so there's some, some foundation, foundation works. That. Yes, I see. And uh, we understand that there was some update of the percentage of completion yes. at a point. At a point, there was an, an update of it which suggested that 80 percent of the ground works had been done. Ground works, 80 percent of the ground works had been done. But as it stands now, this is the state of the law village. But this doesn't look like 80%. Well, look, I mean, I, I, I'm not... Uh, I mean, you and I don't do the assessment. Control, we don't get to do the assessment. But this is a foundation. But, but you don't need... I mean, look, if you say 80% of foundation work's done, does this look like it? This is bare land, right? And obviously, that building there is not the, the building we're talking about, right? Which building? No, Let's the buildings you see there, I think those are the UPSA no, 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 no. hostels. Let's, let's go back. This one is This particular one. So now I understand even these buildings, which are supposed to be places where materials have been kept, are let out to some people to also lay their so heads. people are squ squatters are Squatters there. are in there. So this is what we are talking about. So this is actually supposed to be the law village, the one that is supposed to be uh, an investment in infrastructure so that it will increase access to legal education. I see. But as was promised in the 2020... Uh, manifesto of the MPP. But so the completed building we see in the far off in that video. It's not part of it. It's the UPSA hostel. Yes, that is not part of it. Okay. So this is the location of this, where this sword was cut yeah. by the president yeah. for this law village project. Yeah. Groundworks 80% completed. That's what they said. But the question to our viewers is whether this groundworks looks 80% complete. Yeah. And also, how much so far has been sunk into this project? Well, that's we are unable to now. ascertain yet. Only that we know by the time this project is done, with all that was expected to be done, like I mentioned earlier, the academic block, the library block, the conference block, the hostel block, all that is supposed to cost us 55 million US dollars. 55 million. So as it stands now, that is what we have there. The promise was that by the end of the four years, so yes, over the next four years, they were mm. expand infrastructure. This was a major infrastructural expansion they were supposed to embark on. Mm. And that is what we have for, by way of updates. I see. On this uh, promise. Project of the... That's the video we've been showing you. Law Village. On the, uh, the, the foundation. This is what we have yeah. of the Law Village. Cel certainly, uh, this cannot be completed within 10 months. The, the nature of the details of the project we're talking about. 
you, you said it's what? We're looking at hostel facility? Yes. And we're then also an academic block. Academic block. The first phase is supposed to be the completion of the academic block. Which As, which really it's what is going to open up the access for many to be able to join. Mm. Open up the access for many to be able to join. Mm. The, 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 or to go to the law school. I see. So now so, guess what? This <laughs> same line. If you paid close attention to Baumia's um, vision statements, right. this same line was repeated in there. In the vision statement yes. he delivered? Except to add that now access to professional legal education, he added and also medical school. Something along those lines. I see. So it's, there's a high probability But he that was the same person who made this announcement at the unveiling of the manifesto, like I played the video. So there's a high probability that we should expect that Maybe if is. what he said is anything to go by, they will capture it. In the 2024 Again, manifesto? perhaps. As an, an ongoing project? Well, ongoing, continuation. I see. Well, you know what? We, 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 we do all of this to add another layer of verification for our viewers. So this was when... Yes, when there's, the men were some on the work ground. going on. Yes. This was in November 2021. The video you're seeing now is November 2021. This same area. That's when the foundation, was they, were, they were putting the iron rods and others. Yes. So I think it was around this time when I think they had, they had gone past a certain stage. And also we were told that 80% of the groundworks were almost done. It was in but November 2021. And then just this afternoon, the video will be, you're about seeing it was taken at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Take a look at this. At 2 p.m., this is the state of affairs today. From November 2021 today. This is it. So there's, there's a clear difference, or at least you know if some work had been going on consistently. And we, we don't belittle the impact that this would have had. Obviously, expanding legal education, and we talk about not many lawyers in this country, and many people desiring to get into the law school. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's a promise that I'm sure you, uh, a lot of the law students, prospective law students, bought into. And that would have even influenced whatever decision you, you take. To vote. It's, Precisely. It's, it's important. Precisely. Um, so this is something that, look, we, we're going to keep an eye on this one. And um, as we have showed you, it was a promise that was made, yet to be delivered. The foundations, as we're seeing right now, or to be charitable, is, uh, is, a promise so, in progress. So, as you see, so let's put here's it. This is the, the two videos side, side by, by side. side. So, this is the, the one that you see human beings on, on that 2021. This was in 2021, as against what we are seeing now in 2024, where there's no activity on this land. And squatters have taken over that building you see there. So, for this prospective law students, and even those in the law schools yes. desiring, yeah. you know exactly what's going on. And we demand that level of accountability Amazing. in our democracy to ensure that we benefit from what this democracy offers. Because in the end, look, we cannot just be treated with manifesto promises that don't get fulfilled, especially when the manifesto, this hmm, is the only document that defines that relationship or the contract that you have with the politician. reason why you vote for them is the manifesto. And so if they tell us what they cannot do, we have every right, at least as journalists, doing our job to bring it to bear and demand some level of accountability. That's what, look, Manifesto Check is all about. And it's a journey that we're going to go the long haul. The number of you, we've been getting messages from some of our viewers asking why they focus on the NPP Manifesto. So there's a quick answer to that. They are the government in power. They won the mandate in 2020. They are been giving the resources and the power to prosecute the promises that they made to us. So we can only do fact-checking and then also 
cross-checking of those status of the promises that they made. The NDC launches their manifesto, the CPP launches their manifesto. Okay, that's true. We'll now look into the possibility and the feasibility, the timeliness of all the promises they and, make. And Alfred, if, if, yeah. the, MP, if the NDC okay. had come to power and were doing this same manifesto check of what they had said in mm -hmm. 2020, what they said in respect of this was that they were coming to accredit more faculties to take up the role of professional training. So what that meant was that if they were in power today, mm -hmm. would have been checking with the faculties. I think there were 14 of them that are running to see Super. which of them are doing professional training. Good. But they did not come to power. So Those who came to power said they were going to increase infrastructure. One of the key things was to build a law village. Fantastic idea. But An attempt is made. They are at it. Here we are. But the, well, the verdict is, is yours. Manifesto check and the verdict is yours, the viewer, to take. After this quick break, five years on, the Attorney General, Godfrey Abouadam, is saying that there is no fit for purpose docket available to prosecute the Ahmed Swale case. Why is that? We have a conversation after this quick break. Stay with us. General Minister for Justice, Governor Yabu Adami, has informed Parliament that the police is yet to submit any prosecution docket to his office five years after the murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Swale. Answering questions in Parliament, Godfrey Yabu Adami told members of Parliament he continues to implore the police, that's Ghana Police Service, to intensify efforts to also identify and arrest the journalist killers and it's been five years on he says he doesn't have a prosecutable docket on this Amatswale case it is worthy to know that it's a matter being investigated by the criminal investigations department of ghana police service no docket fit for prosecution or action has been built and presented to my office as i stand before you since the deceased died it is therefore correct to say that the attorney general is not ceased of the matter I demanded a report to the State House of Investigations, and the Director General of CID obliged my request and presented a docket giving an account of work so far done on the Ahmed Swale murder case. First one to further request for information on the State of Investigations, a second information docket was received by my office in May 2023. The docket indicated that investigations into the case are still ongoing and that the identity of the perpetrators of the deceased was still outstanding. No identifiable suspects have thus been found. Well, this is the Attorney General today, but this statement he made about not having a prosecutable docket on this Amitswale case is not necessarily or entirely new. In fact, we're going to show you a statement that the Attorney General made. In Parliament, this time around, sometime in 2021, same tangent. Take a look at this. This is what is, is 27th of July, 2021, the Attorney General said, quote, being concerned about the failure to resolve this, that's the Amitwale case, and other homicide cases, I inquired about the state of investigations into the same. That's on the Amitwale case. I emphasize to the IGP and his team the need to conclude investigations for action to be taken as soon as possible practically possible. That's the Attorney General on the 27th of July, 2021. This same statement that he made about not having a prosecutable document, it follows after what he said in 2021. So question is, what is happening and why is the Ghana Police Service unable to put together a prosecutable document or docket on this matter? Now, we do know that some two persons were arrested in connection with this Ahmed Swale murder. They have been granted bail the last time we checked because the witnesses could not even identify these people who were arrested as, as persons of interest in this case. So they have been granted a police inquiry bail the last time we checked. This is what the president also said about this Ahmed Swale case um, in 2022. Despite very wide efforts made by the police and CID, we still have not been able to lay hands on the perpetrators of the Swale death. It is unfortunate. So, 
President's talking about the efforts of the police and the CID. The Attorney General says, you know what, You've, you have to conclude on investigations so that we can put together a prosecutable docket on this Ahmed Swale case. What has to be done to get justice for Ahmed Swale uh, going forward? And the family, and in fact, all journalists for that matter. This is one question that certainly begs for a lot more answers. Coming up next, the minority in parliament has come to the defense of uh, DCOP Gabriel Prince Wabu, who has come under fire for comments he made about the security of election 2024. Uh, that's coming up next here on Ghana Tonight on this matter and uh, the way forward. Well, guess what? The minority in parliament earlier today is saying that the comments made by the DCOP Gabriel Prince Wabu about the security of election 2024 was misconstrued and taken out of context by the Ghana Police Service itself. Now, the police service disassociated itself um, from the senior police officer's comments in a statement they issued about 24 hours ago, which uh, were to the effect that the military will not be involved in the security of election 2024. Let's see exactly what he said. Now, take a look at this. Election security task force was formed. The inspector general of police was made the chairman of that body. There are allied security services which supports the police in the discharge of their mandate when it comes to the management of election security in our country. The CEDS, who is, if you like, the leader of the armed forces, is a member of that task force. But you see, the issue is that the police are the ones who must respond. The military comes in only and only when the police are overstretched and overwhelmed. And in fact, even if they have to intervene, they do that at the behest of the police. That is the security architecture we have adapted for ourselves. And so when we witnessed shooting in Techiman South, where soldiers were first responders, we thought that that was regrettable, it was unfortunate, and should never repeat itself. And so what the DCOP simply said was nothing but a statement of fact. And it is our expectation that moving into election 2024, we expect the police to discharge their mandate very effectively and efficiently in order to make it unnecessary for the military to be brought in. Because the military, as you and I know, are not trained primarily to maintain internal law and order. And so when you bring them in, normally you are bound to have certain challenges. As much as possible, we think that the police service, you know, should be adequately equipped and tooled to perform their functions and only bring in the military as a last resort, as a last resort. And so we decry the conduct of the police service by disassociating themselves with statements attributed to the DCOP Gabriel Wabu because those were statements of fact. We decried their conduct. Worst of all, they are even saying now he would be subjected to uh, internal disciplinary proceedings. For what offense? For stating what is obvious and factual? For stating what is born out of the law and the constitution of the land? That is why we found it necessary this afternoon to state categorically that we will not countenance any meddling in the task assigned the police service moving into election 2024 by any other security agency of our state unless and until the police themselves have found it necessary and reasonable to invite them to assist them discharge that mandate. Well, that's James Agaga there, the ranking on the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. They've come to the defense of the DCOP, who, according to the police statement earlier, is going to be subjected to internal disciplinary measures. But what exactly did the DCOP say? That the minority, in fact, is supporting and the police itself being against. Take a look. This is what is quoted to have said. That we are not maybe going to involve the military, as it were, because 
it was not even the police that, you know, came out with this issue. That's why also was work on violence. So it's going to be only the police, the prisons fire, and then immigration that is going to conduct this election. They are going to support us. It's our baby. It's the police's baby, but we want to work with the other security uh, agencies, sister agencies, to assist in one way or the other on court. That's this UOP Gabriel Prince Wabu's statement, which is the police is distancing itself from and indicating they're going to subject him to some internal disciplinary measures. The minority thinks otherwise. We'll see how things play out. Thank you very much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company as always. Make a date, same time tomorrow. We have a conversation with you. My name is Alfred Akonsi. Have a good night. Ghana